Well, NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman says the games were a success. Karina Huber sat down with him and began by asking about the fans. Well, the fans were all sorts of people. Were there a lot of expats from a variety of countries because our players come from over 20 countries. They're the world's best hockey players. But there were a lot of Chinese people there who were learning about hockey. And the best way to learn about hockey in the first instance is to see it in person because there's no better sport in person than hockey. Do you expect to have more exhibition games in China? Uh, that's the plan. We have a lot of work to do. Obviously, we want to work with the government. That's priority number one. But also, we have to work with our players' association to make sure we can button down everything uh, to everybody's satisfaction. But based on the reception that we got, the energy in the building, the way the crowd was reacting to the game, we think it would be great to come back. And given that, how far away are we from seeing the NHL have regular season games in China? I think that's a possibility. I think we need to build one step at a time. Uh, playing a game, preseason game in Shanghai and then in Beijing was a great start. I think we'll focus on doing that ag again, and then we will build over time. And I know winter sports has become a priority for the Chinese government. So the combination of, of the joint goal of growing winter sports, and in particular hockey, is something that I think should work well for all of us. Now, obviously, this is great for business. We're talking about a market of 1.3 billion people. We've noticed. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, there's formidable challenges for the sport. I mean, the Chinese viewers are very familiar with basketball and, and soccer, but hockey is relatively unknown there at this point, correct? Well, I think, you know, basketball had an experience where they had to grow slowly. I think having a world-class player like Yao Ming help fuel their growth. But from what we hear at the inception, uh, the experience basketball the NBA had was very much like the experience that we're now having. So if that's the baseline, I'm very optimistic about the future growth prospects. Now, I'm from Canada, where, of course, hockey is king. Yes. Uh, but speaking to some of my friends, you know, there, there's some, some challenges they're facing namely tempering some of the expectations among their children, because so many of them want to make it to the NHL, but the reality is very few do. Uh, so what would you advise parents tell their children when it comes to both encouraging them to continue with the sport, but tempering some of those expectations? Well, we love the fact that young people love our game. Uh, when it comes to teamwork, hard work, discipline, leadership, physical fitness, you could certainly not do better than be a hockey player, whether or not you're a boy or a girl. But most importantly, we think young people should have fun playing hockey, and they should sample other sports. We don't want young people to burn out on the game by playing too much too soon. So you know what? It's great if you're a wonderful athlete and you have the skills to make it to the NHL. But enjoy your childhood and play as many sports as possible. Another concern among some parents, of course, is head injuries, particularly now that we're seeing more reports coming out linking head injuries to CTE. How is the NHL kind of approaching this problem? Well, we've, we've been leaders in this space. We've been working with our players and our physicians, the medical community, our trainers since 1997. Uh, to stay on top of all the developments and what the medical community is learning. And when it comes to treatment, diagnosis, uh, we know all of us more than we did just years ago. And so it's important that there's education and that if somebody sustains a concussion that it's treated appropriately. And in particular, the, you're not rushing players back too quickly. And how do you make the sport safer? Uh, what we do is we uh, educate with rule changes, we make equipment and the environment as good as possible, and we make our players and younger players understand the types of plays that are hockey plays and the types of plays uh, that we want to get out of the game. And our players are making different and better choices on the types of physical contact they have, and that's been an evolving process. Now, some people say this sport is going to have to dramatically change, though, to make it legitimately safer. Do you agree with that? I think the sport is safer than it's been. Uh, we're taking all sorts of steps in that direction, but we do have a physical game uh, played in an enclosed environment. I think what we do at the professional level isn't necessarily what 
five and six year olds should be doing, uh, but Hockey Canada and USA Hockey do a good job of deciding what's right for young people. Another controversial issue I just wanted to bring up with you right now. Uh, there's a conversation being had as to whether it's appropriate for professional athletes to exercise their First Amendment rights, i.e. freedom of speech, on the field. What's the NHL's take on that? We, we respect our players and we understand that on political and social issues, it's ultimately a matter of individual choice. And then lastly, just other than China, where else are you hoping to grow the sport at this point? Well, we, we look to make sure the gift sport is strong everywhere since our players come from all over the world, uh, particularly historically Northern Europe and Russia. The fact of the matter is we want to continue the growth of the game everywhere. And to the extent we can encourage the best hockey players in the world to develop, not just in North America, but throughout the world, we know they're going to come to play in the world's best hockey league, which is the National Hockey League. And in terms of priorities, though, where does China rank, would you say? China uh, is an important country, obviously, to anybody doing business on a worldwide basis. Uh, the, the people of China have great passion, great focus, and China is very big.